striker to another. Give us your assessment of Rashford's night overall. I thought his movement was excellent. I said at half time, his timing of the runs, and I think this suits him. I, I've never thought he was a he was a centre forward, a central player. I don't think he ever really played that. You know, in youth football, I think he always wanted to be a number ten or a wide player, um, and I think that it suits him. The other thing, I, th I think it suits Martial as well. Now, he's probably the best out the, out the two of them to play down the middle. Um, but the running off the ball tonight was a, a real feature. But as I say, it's, it's no real secret. They're one of the best counter-attacking teams in the country, if not the best. Um, and it's the other side that they've got to get now. At Old Trafford, you know, comfortable in possession. But when you've got those five attacking players, you know, the likes of Pogba, Fernandes and those front three, I mean, there's not many better attacking units in the world of football than that. So if they can just show up at the back, be better in possession, then, uh, then they will have a right run for this title. Paul, we'll wax lyrical about Rashford's first goal shortly, but let's look at the one that made it 3-1, his second goal of the night. Often we're on the back of referees, but on this occasion, we should give Michael Oliver a bit of a pat on the back. Yeah, he does well. It's really good play for, from Paul Pogba. Great skill um, to get away from his man. It, it did look like it. It, it was a foul, and he said, Michael Oliver, let, let's play, go, go on. Um, great bit of skill from him, nice pass, and that's what we saw all night, the movement and the, the cleverness from, from Fernandes especially. I think Martial is playing this for himself. <laughs> I don't think there's any way. So you agree with Ali McCoy? Oh, again. yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. He's definitely playing this for himself. Greedy centre-forward, <laughs> as Michael will tell you. Um, but Rashford, no. It's a, look, it's not the best of finishes from Rashford, and the keeper will be disappointed with that. Roberto, did we see from Paul Pogba tonight the kind of Paul Pogba that the United fans want to see a whole lot more of? He looked like once the gloves were off, he was enjoying himself for a change. It was. I think it was a big challenge for him as well. It's not easy to come into a midweek game at Sheffield United, bottom of the league, and he looked committed. He looked just wanting to make things happen. He showed a bit of everything. He was aggressive. He was strong defensively, very, very aware. And then on the ball, he produced two or three moments that they were match-winning moments. And I think that could be the big difference in Manchester United this season, if you can get that sort of form and commitment from Paul Pogba. This is a different team. In terms of the run, the timing of the run, the first touch and the goal itself, how good was that equaliser from Rashford? It was brilliant. I mean, it's the perfect angle. If you're going to pick up speed to come in from one in at 20 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour, whatever he's running at, I mean, it's not easy at all. And, uh, and he did every single aspect of that finish uh, perfectly. When you look at the other chance he had, Paul, should he been leaving here tonight with the ball, with a hat-trick? Yeah, he probably should have. He had quite a few chances, actually. He had a great chance in the first half as well that he, he probably sh should have scored. Onto his left foot, away from the defender. I mean, he's, he's moving great with the ball. His, his touch is great. Um, you know, you'd still question his finishing. You know, even his two finishes today, one was just pure power that he didn't know where the goalkeeper was, and the second one was pretty average finish, wasn't it, really? Goalkeeper's fault. Um, but his general play and his timing of the runs is exceptional. Roberto, what stood out for you in terms of Rashford this evening? I think it's that, that, that it, it weighs uh, uh, something on your shoulders when you're the striker, you're the man that you need to get the, that final touch. Obviously, it's, it's Sheffield United, the one that starts the game on the front foot, and you had that moment. Um, as as Mike was, was highlighting, the movement was exceptional, but that just in front of goal, it looked confident. It, it just took a few minutes against Leipzig in the Champions League to score a hat-trick. It's just this season, for me, I've seen a more mature Rashford, not just at Manchester United, but for England as well. And you can see that he's growing all the time. When you got that pace and then that composure in front of, ball, uh, of the goal, it makes it a, a very special striker. Martial looking frustrated at times. He was making the runs but not getting the service. Eventually he gets it from Paul Pogba. Was it deliberate service to make it 2-1? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Should Only ask Ali. To... I mean, certainly it was a deliberate um, run from, from uh, Martial. You can see him actually pointing across. Um, to Pogba in the build-up, and he was all at, at this all night. See, see the difference though between the the Rashford run and the Martial run there. Rashford had loads of momentum, picking up his speed as he ran across the line, whereas Martial's having to almost just check from staying on side here. It's almost like a step and then back in. So little short bursts, uh, very different to be a, from a, a central uh, forward to, 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 to come on someone coming in from wide. Um, but there was no question he was ready for it. He was waiting for that moment, ball to come across, step on side and make his run. Uh, he impressed me tonight because, I don't think, again, I don't think he's a, a, a natural centre-forward, but his little movements... I mean, in the first half, we were right next to it. Some of the movement between Martial and Rashford was brilliant. Right, let's hear from the Manchester United boss, Oli Gunnar is, Thanks. And we'll talk about what's possible for United over the course of the rest of the season with the boys shortly. But first of all, Roberto, he mentioned there at the start of that interview how Sheffield United in the latter stages made life uncomfortable for them. How did they do that? 
Well, I think you get that that second goal, and all of a sudden you're gonna throw bodies forward. I thought the introduction of uh, Mousset and and, and Brooks that almost fixed the centre halves and allowed David McGoldrick to have a little bit of space. Then the wing backs get into higher positions, and any forward ball becomes uh, a divided ball. Any bounce, and Brooks had a, a fantastic opportunity before that. So it gives you the fear that all of a sudden you were so dominant that you could lose two points at that at that uh, moment. But I think it was a. I think. All they will be delighted in the in the mentality of, of the team that they, they the way they finished the game with the three points. Yeah, with four minutes of the game remaining, David McGoldrick gets his second of the night. Michael, are we giving Lindelof an assist for this one? <laughs> we only need a tiny bit of fortune and the ball's over the line. So and that then, you know, set it up for a grandstand finish. But did Sheffield United get some fortune in terms of being awarded the corner in the first place? Let's clear this one up with our man Mark Clattenburg who joins us now. Mark, what's your take on it? Yeah, they certainly got lucky, and it, thank God it didn't affect the result. Michael Oliver had a great game, we've seen it with the advantage, so he didn't make many mistakes, but it, was, it always leads to a goal, but lucky enough it didn't affect the result. Mark Tremendous, thanks ever so much. Uh, how close, boys, were Sheffield United to making it 3-3 and a draw? Lee Smooth said, come on, subject. we knew how good he'd been in this fixture last year. How close were they? To leading here with a point. Very close. Uh, I think the partnership uh, was something. It, there is a chemistry between Brewster and, and, and Muste. Uh, you can see when, when he gets a header, the, the action, the technical action of the, the striker is just to find the back of the net. And it's a good reaction from Henderson. It's that moment that as a goalkeeper you need to show your focus, your concentration. And probably if he couldn't loop that ball a little bit over the keeper. He had a great angle to, to find the back of the net, wasn't it? But I think it was only perfect for Henderson to, to be able to, to save it. Well, let's talk about Henderson, Paul, because winding the clock right back to the fifth minute, the Blades get their noses in front. Was, was Henderson caught in two minds that allowed the opening? Yeah, I, I think that comes from not playing games. We said taking the lead in the first five minutes and look, United came into after that and United was special after that. What did you make of Henderson's night overall, Michael? Yeah, apart from that mistake, I thought he did well. I mean, it's interesting listening to the, the lads before the game and, you know, talking about goalkeepers, I, I get the, the fact that you don't really want to change too much, mm. but here's a young lad that could be the future of Manchester United. Is De Gea going to be there forever? Do you Probably think he not. is? I think he could be the future, but you can't just leave him on the bench for the next three or four years and never play and then all of a sudden think he's going to be the future. Mm. So it's, it's quite a tricky situation, of course, Putting him out on loan is the perfect scenario, but that's happened for the last couple of seasons. And now it's a case of, you know, can you give him enough time to actually, when the time comes to hand over the gloves, he's experienced enough in this team. Um, so, you know, I'm the same. I would have played probably De Gea, you know, yeah. because he's playing well. But I, I can understand the dilemma that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's got. How would you manage him, Roberto? Well, I think you can understand that this was a, an opportunity for Ole to give a start to a keeper that he knows where he's going. These are a, a well-known surroundings. has been very well respect in the last two years here but there is a we were talking with Paul I think the goalkeeper is a lonely position it's very very difficult to rotate a goalkeeper it's almost you don't want to distract a good run uh, David De Gea had two good games Henderson when you start uh, sometimes it happens that you can give him a competition let's say you can get a keeper that he can play the domestic cups for example and the other goalkeeper will play the league and probably the Champions League or the European um, competition but Chopping and changing, I don't think that is a situation that helps a goalkeeper. But I thought that his mentality was incredible to be in the game after that mistake. Has he done enough, Paul, though, when he's been given his... ...centre boys talking about on a different level. But Chris Wilder, eh, really upbeat, and so he should be. He has to be, he's got to be, he's got to be positive, guys. And eh, as disappointed as he will with the situation, he'll look at that performance tonight. A vast improvement from the one at the weekend where they were soundly beaten um, at Southampton. And he'll take, he'll take a lot from that tonight and they'll press on again to the next game. Do you think he can turn it around? Everybody's writing them off. You can understand why when they're nine points adrift already. But can you see him pulling this one around? Do you know something? You know, I've got to be honest and say no because of the points difference at this moment in time. I said in commentary, I, I certainly think they'll pick up a lot of points between now and the end of the season. Whether they pick up enough points remains to be seen, but I would have my doubts. Ali, thanks ever so much. Entertaining and brilliant as ever. Safe journey home for you. Uh, Roberto, let's look at what's coming up for the Blades. And we, we touched on this right at the start from a manager who knows what it's like to pull off the great escapes as you did with Wigan. Is, is it up here? Is it mentally 
being strong that's the most important thing almost in this situation it is i was listening to chris wild and it was very impressive uh, normally what's very dangerous is that you become emotional and mm. you need to be very rational and and that's what he what what he was he knows exactly what he wants at this point it's all psychological it's just coming back to training and it's not just the players because the players you just focus on wanting to play you got a battle to have is the staff members is everyone that is around the team you need to keep the belief you need to give a, a real clarity and there is enough games i know that ali was looking at it in a very much a specific way just as the facts and figures but 25 games left and probably you will need another uh, 30 points 31 points this this one is going to be the lowest uh, point tally to to stay up so do you think they have to get a week win at the weekend against brighton Whenever you get that first win, is is better. You get the monkey uh, out of the bag, but that's not going to mean that you're going to stay up if you win. And in the same way, if you don't get the win, it doesn't mean you're going to get relegated. It's a long uh, marathon here. And today you'll be delighted with some of the partnerships, some of the reaction. For me, the biggest moment is when they considered the the two goal difference. The team just kept fighting, keep doing the right things, and that's where you build a, a team that you can go into the final third to get enough points. And that's what it is about staying in the Premier League. Is can you get into the final third with something that will give you an opportunity to stay up. Not the fear that all of a sudden you go uh, fighting with other teams, that all of a sudden they haven't been a, a relegation battle and they get shocked. I think Sheffield United, they're not going to get shocked. They know where they are and that's a big advantage in, in, in the way that you, you're approaching it. Paul, let's throw things to the other end of the table. United five points of Liverpool. They've still got a game in hand. They're very much in this title race, aren't they? Yeah, you'd have to think so. And, you know, at times tonight they were, they were fantastic. Look, Ollie, this year, I think he's changed formation a, a lot of times. He's changed, changed personnel a lot. Um, I went back before the game, we spoke about them five games they had last season, last season where they didn't change the team. It was virtually this team tonight, apart from the left back and the goalkeeper. It was a 4 2 3 1. It really suited them. And I was excited for this season. It's not quite worked out the start of the season as I would have expected. But now, I think he's found, found the right way of playing. I think them two midfield. I think that's probably the only position I'd think about changing every now and again, every now and again is the Matic one. He's got Fred, he's got McTominay, he can do that. I thought Pogba was excellent tonight in that position. And it's a, it's a formation that really suits the team. With Fernandez in that, in that number 10 role, feeding Martial, Rashford, um, Greenwood. How exciting is that? As Michael says, three of the best, quickest, best finishers around Europe when they get when they get chances. I think the biggest problem is getting possession of the ball with them two, getting control of the game, Pogba and Matic. Them two need to have control of the game if Fernandez is going to be involved in the game. Once them two get control of the game, United are off and flying, and it does help the centre halves as well. And, you know, it's a team game, we, they have to contribute to everything. If I, no, look, I, I think if they can keep nine or ten players fit for the next 26 games, which I know... <laughs> That's it, a big it, ask. It is a big ask. I think they'll be there and thereabouts. We did see a, a slight drop-up in, in performance when, when two or three subs came on. So that tells me there's probably 12 or 13 players that are good enough. Keeping them fit is, is going to be difficult. But I think tonight they've found a real way of playing, an exciting way of playing. Like I said, 26 games, they might be thereabouts. In our Every Goal, Every Game show last night, Tim Sherwood really put his neck on the block and said United can win the title. Are you prepared to be so bold, Michael? Well, they can, yeah. I think there's, there's a few teams that can this season, definitely. I think the only way they can, though, is to get the best players out on the pitch. Scholes just uh, alluded to it. If you've got Paul Pogba in your squad, if you've got, Fernand, if you've got these great players, I mean, you can't possibly win the, the title if they're going to be you know, in the stand. Yeah. So you've got these unbelievable players that you've invested millions in. You have to find a way of playing them because the only way Manchester United will win the title is with their best players playing. You take three or four out of the team and then all of a sudden they're an OK team. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got to keep finding ways. It looked like it worked today. He's got to keep finding ways of getting the likes of Pogba, Fernandez, and those front three. How they haven't played um, that much together over the last sort of few months is, is unbelievable. That's such an exciting team out there today. And he's got to find a way of playing that team more often. Will he do it over the course of the rest of the season? We've had a really enjoyable three nights here on. What are we expecting to happen, picks wise, over the course of the festive period? Any of those games, particularly for you, Roberto, stand out? Well, obviously, Southampton Manchester City has to be a That's because you're doing it. No, just because <laughs> it's exciting to watch the two teams. There's nothing about the pundits, believe me. But no, I think every time you see the, the top teams playing is... Um, I watch a lot of games around Europe, and I must admit, uh, the game Spurs and, and Liverpool... Um, 
is, is one of the best level uh, games that you get. And, and, and the, the Christmas period, we all know how difficult those games are, the amount of, of, of points to fight for. It's going to be uh, very, very competitive, so no favourites in, in those fixtures. Roberto, Paul, Michael, thanks so much for your company tonight. So the bad records continue for the Blaze, they've been blunt. Um, once again, we've, we've done well to, to respond, you know, going to go behind, uh, scoring three goals and then of course, late on, if we don't if we don't kill the game off, it's going to be tough at a place like this. So um, today we didn't get anything that we didn't expect. Uh, they, they fought for every ball. They, um, you know, they wanted to win the game and, and, and they fought for 90 minutes. Um, and you know, in the end, we, we managed to get the three points. It's only the second occasion you've started this season with Greenwood, Martial, and Fernandez. How, how much does that help your game? The, the, the freedom it offers, the, the different dimension. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, we, we have the, the potential to, to rotate a lot um, going forward and um, that type of free-flowing football is, is what we enjoy to play in most. Um, so, you know, we have, to, we have to do as well as we can with the, with the team that the manager picks and, you know, that's our job as, as players and today we, we got it right. The third United goal, your second, was exceptional, uh, the move. Were you aware of the role the referee played in it, the advantage? Yeah, he played advantage. Um, and, you know, in the end, that's probably can, we can do that against, against every team in the league. So now, sort out the home form. You've got championship title winning away form. Simple, yeah? Yeah, it's, you know, it sounds simple, but, you know, the, 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 the difficulty is doing it. And um, it's something that we have, to, we have to put right. We have to perform better at, at home and, you know, ultimately pick up more points. And, um, you know, as players, we just try and take it one game at a time. And, just keep trying to win games, which is what United do. But finally, if you look at the table now, you win that game in hand, you're two points behind Liverpool. But this is a title potential season, isn't it? Um, you know, I think, like I said before, we take it one game at a time. Um, it's early on in, in the season. There's a lot of football to be played and it's going to be a lot of ups and downs for everyone. So we have to um, try and find consistency like we found away from home. We need to find that at home. And then... Oli, six wins out of six away from home. The wonderful run continues. Uh, was that edgier than it might have been tonight? <laughs> yeah, it could have been more comfortable, obviously. A couple of reasons for that. We were a little bit sloppy. 3-1 uh, up, we could have scored. Uh, we created some good chances. The corner that led to the second goal wasn't the corner. But then w when it goes in, it's uh, really, really difficult at the end because they are uh, a handful, a uh, very unorthodox way, but very direct and physical, and it made it hard for us. Uh, your goalkeeper, Dean Henderson, you gave him a go. Uh, not a good start for him, a wonderful finish for him. Yeah. Uh, sum up his night. <laughs> yeah, good, bad and the ugly. Maybe <laughs> in a different uh, uh, chronologic order, but uh, it's, a, it's a test and a learning. It's always learning. You know, he comes back here and uh, he's probably been looking forward to this for a long, long while. And uh, to get that start, uh, he just shows his character uh, and the rest of the game. Speaking to Marcus Rashford, he, he, he said he really enjoyed the rare chance to, to have Martial uh, and Greenwood and Fernandez alongside him. Yep. It hasn't happened a lot. Um, mm. what, what dimension does that add and what did you see in Marcus particularly tonight? Oh, obviously, with the, with the pace and the skill uh, in these boys, the quality of the touches and movements, I thought the, all three goals were excellent. Uh, then again, I wanted to test them here today because uh, we knew it was going to be a physical test. A fight, they're going to get kicked, they're going to get kicked late after they've been... Uh, uh, Over-physical at times? Because no, you, you it, mentioned you know, a so, few things to Chris at the end there. Yeah, we just... We, I don't mind a fair tackle, but when it's like a second after the, the tackle's been made, there was a couple right in front of me. So, But uh, I think it's, it's one of these games that these boys will learn from. It's a proper game and it's uh, like football should be. So uh, I apologised. I, I went maybe overboard with my with the word, but that's uh, we'll uh, we'll have a drink after me and Chris. Anyway. One thing to bear in mind: uh, Edinson Cavani has been charged by the FA uh, in relation to the social media post. Are you surprised yeah. at that? What's your reaction to that? Well, we've of course uh, I know that Edinson never meant any harm. It's his friend, uh, and he, he has um, come into a new country and uh, made a mistake and. Uh, He's apologised, he didn't mean any uh, malice, so we'll work with the FA and uh, hopefully he, uh, he'll be OK. Yeah, it might, it might mean a three-game ban. Yeah, that's, well, if that is the case, then uh, uh, we'll, we'll hear with the FA what's, what's the uh, verdict. You're, you're up to sixth now, you look at the table, you win that game in hand, you're two points behind Liverpool. Um, 
sort sort the home form out because the away form <laughs> yeah, just that is, is title winning away form. Yeah, but we need to sort the home form, uh, as you said. Uh, obviously, that's it's not like it's home and away uh, in these conditions uh, without fans, and uh, it seems like we're going to be in uh, in this situation a little little longer. So. Um, but we should be more used to the Old Trafford pitch than these pitches. So uh, hopefully Sunday we'll, we'll start. It's a massive game for us. We know that. We've been waiting for years to get, to get this game on. And um, we'll be ready for it. Well done tonight. Thank you. Well Cheers. done.